you can play online multiplayer chess on this user's GitHub profile. And you know what? There are even more games in other profiles. Today we're gonna see four of them and how the magic happens under the hood. So let's get started. Let's begin with a simple one. Single player, tic-tac-toe. This is the board and I can decide my move. And after clicking there, I can find that the AI decided where to move. Obviously, I'm joking, there's no AI here. And from here, I can continue playing. So this seems like a smart move. I can now block the red circle, block it again. And I think this is gonna be a draw. Let's play again. And let's see what happens if I make the wrong moves. For example, I can start from here. I can go there and let's let it win. And yes. Zero wins. But actually, in this game, unless you make a wrong move, it will always end draw. There's no way I can win. For example, if I try to search for draw, there are 183 cases where the game ends draw. If I try with O wins, 386 cases when the computer wins. And if I try with the X, well, this was the answer I was looking for. There's literally no way you can win in this game. But let's move on to the second one. This is again tic-tac-toe, but this time it is multiplayer, kind of. So here I can see that the current turn is the X, and well, this seems like a reasonable tile to put my marker. So if I click here, the page reloads. And what happens? So I can click on a tile to play, and the most picked move is chosen every hour. And if I scroll down here, it says a little bit more about the rules. So each open tile is a hyperlink, and if I hover here, you can see at the bottom left corner that there's a URL, and also here there's a different one. So clicking each hyperlink tracks the number of clicks and redirects back to the profile. Yes, that's what happened. And every time the program is run, it plays the move with the maximum number of clicks. And it does that with a GitHub action running every hour. What I'm expecting here is that after clicking here, all the people are gonna click here, and this will be the selected move, and Wow, this was unexpected. Well, actually recording this video, the hour ticked, it's 11 and four, and looks like people decided to not let the X win by putting the marker here. But let's see the GitHub action, and I can find it obviously in the repository. Updated the game one minute ago, <laughs> what a coincidence. And if I go on the workflow folder and play tic-tac-toe, and indeed there's a cron job running every hour, which does a checkout of the project and runs something in Python, I think, yes. So this is tic-tac-toe.py and those are the links we clicked in the main readme page. And this is basically the code that counts how many clicks are since the last run and then decides the move. And I think the last step is obviously updating the readme with the correct state. So this was multiplayer, but you cannot actually decide the cell because to be fair, I wanted to put the marker here and win the game, but looks like the majority decided to not do that. Let's move on to the next game. And this is finally the actual multiplayer online chess. How does it work? It's not by clicking on the tile. Those are just images or empty tiles. But if you scroll down a little bit, you can say that it is my turn to move and I can pick from which tile I should move to which tile. This makes sense in chess because for example, I can go on E2 with both the king and the bishop. So it doesn't make sense that I can click on a tile, but rather I need to decide the combination from and to. And just click a link. So let's decide which move we should take. Here the knight is in danger because the king can capture it, but we could also do a smarter move that is capturing the bishop with a rook so that the king cannot actually capture the knight. And let's do it. So the rook is on g6, and we want to move it on g7. I can find it here, g6, can go on g7. But what happens if I click here, and it should be described here how it works, so the link will submit a new issue with the desired move. A GitHub action will run a small Python script that performs the specific movement. Update read me and commit the changes. Let's see how it works. So we say it from G6 to G7, I click here, and this will generate an issue saying just chess, move G6 to G7, and I think there's nothing to change. So let's sub in the issue and see what happens. In theory, what I would expect now is that there's a GitHub action running in the repository that is listening to new issues that are being created. 
And if I find chest.yaml, there's indeed an on issues types opened action. And this is probably running right now. It's checking out the project. And I think it should read the title of the issue somewhere, probably inside the Python script, and then commit the changes. Let's have a look on main.py. So what it does is should be again reading the issue and performing the desired move. I see here there's a notification and yes, the GitHub action run and I successfully played the move from G6 to G7. The issue is now closed. It also has a nice label saying capture. So if I go back to this user's profile, the move has been performed. Now it sounds a bit confusing, but yeah, it makes sense. So now it's black who should move a piece. So the board basically got rotated. We moved from G6, from G7, it was previously up here because it was wide turn. Now the board rotated, so our rook is now here. And this was how multiplayer chess works, but to be fair, I think the very first version is from Tim Burgan from the GitHub staff, but unfortunately this looks broken right now. I think there were quite some open issues and the move are not being performed. And this is not in Python, but was thoroughly in Ruby, and entirely written in the text of the GitHub action. I think this was kind of a nice experiment and then a lot of people took this as an example and made their own version. So also props to Mark that in fact fixed the game and remade it with Python. The last game I wanted to show you today is from Jonathan and is Connect4. This basically follows all the principle we saw earlier so we can move by clicking on a column, which then generates an issue. So it's red turn to play. Let's put it on the column seven. This will again generate an issue with a specific title. I can submit a new issue. And again, I'm expecting a GitHub action to run and perform my move. Let's inspect it as we did for the chess game. And oh, I think it's it was already closed. Yeah, so the action here just added the eyes emoji and closed the issue. So let's go to the profile and see what happened. After refreshing the page, I see that my red disk is now here. The cool thing that is different from the other games is that, well, now I can play as the blue team, but it will be boring to play on both sides. So if you're just waiting for someone, you can request a move from the Connect4 boat. And <laughs> let's give it a try. If I click here, it will again open an issue saying drop blue and AI instead of specifying the column. So if I submit a new issue, I would expect the AI or maybe a simple algorithm trying to figure out what will be the best move to perform now. Let me refresh the page. I think this was quite fast in the beginning. And sure enough, connect for both dropped the disk in column six. I can now see the actions running and there's indeed an action that is performing my task. Within a minute, you can find that the disk is now appear on the column six. You can also find the most recent moves on a leaderboard of the top 10 players with most game winning moves. It looks like someone is playing this game a lot, like this user in 146 games picked the winning move. And that was it for today. I think it was quite cool to see what you can do with a combination of GitHub profiles in Markdown and GitHub actions. If you know other games in GitHub profiles, please let me know because I'm so curious to see them. And with that said, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one. Bye.